one of the best remembered examples that scarred children excuse me what are you doing Hello everybody, welcome back to another episode of Brain Blaze. I, as always, am your revered leader. My name is Simon, what happens here? Danny writes me a script. I'm gonna read it and then Sam afterwards is gonna add in some of the finest memes that you've ever seen. This is public information films, the time the British government decided to scare the shit out of its children. Um, I've told this story before and some absolute legend found it previously. There was a, it was like an advert for smoke detectors in the UK and it was just the most, I, 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 I oh, f tell the story again, but everyone will be like, Simon, we've heard this story like six times. You're ru look at my lips, you're ruining it. There's uh, an advert from the British government to encourage people to install smoke alarms. And the theme of the advert is it's super happy. It's like all going along like, and the theme is, do you forget the little things? Forget your keys, forget to take the trash out. And his wife and family are like, oh, come on, dad. Come on, husband, what are you doing? And then the advert's like, forget to change the batteries in your smoke alarm. And then boom, smash cut. And the guy is sitting outside of his burned down house, holding a picture of his family and crying because they're all dead in a fire because he forgot to change the batteries on his smoke alarm. I know I made a promise, but I didn't see this coming. I didn't count on being happy. And this changed my life because I think about this and I'm always like, where's the smoke alarm? Where's my smoke alarm? Where's my smoke alarm, landlord? Um, I don't know what we're talking about today, but that scared the out of me as a kid. Suburbiton. London, 1974, little Matty wants to stay up late to watch the Friday night horror movie just like his mates from the rough side of the tracks are always allowed to. But Matthew's mother is having none of that shit. She insists, those films are for grown-ups, Matthew. They're not designed for children. And all your mates are absolute scrubbers. <laughs> Some old school insult. What's a scrubber? I'm known as the daddy of the scrub daddy. Bruh. Meet scrub daddy. He's the perfect partner for all of your cleaning needs. Matthew starts having a mini tantrum and screams, It can't be any worse than that bloody public information film I tried to sit through at tea time, mother! I don't know why I'm acting so much today. I mean, overacting desperately. It's terrible, but um, I don't know why I'm playing the character so much today. I'm just in that vibe, I feel it. I can't believe this story you're telling me. It's macabre. At this point, little Matthew's father puts down the newspaper, takes another thoughtful tug of his pipe. <laughs> just imagine daddy's left side. He takes off his belt and beats his child into, into submission. This was the 1970s. He's got a point there, Valerie. I saw that film today and I quite literally myself. Should probably get around to changing my trousers. Pop, 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 pop. The fuck is he talking about? By the time we get to the 1990s, British public information films for children had evolved into a fairly warm and gentle warning about road safety involving singing cartoon headshots. But, 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 but for the previous two decades, the kids of the nation had been regularly frightened out of their wits with a long chain of nightmarish horror films that were on heavy rotation throughout TV schedules. The films were commissioned by the Central Office of Information, COI, which sounds like something straight out of a... out of 1984. I was going to say out of a... Joe Mama! The name of the author. <laughs> oh, Orwell, George Orwell. Straight out of a George Orwell novel. A government agency, which was kind of a post-war version of the Ministry of Information. I don't know what the Ministry of Information is either. <laughs> they were distributed freely to broadcasters and schools to warn children of the dangers of playing on railway tracks, talking to strangers, flying a kite, or essentially just leaving your house and stepping on a lethal world of fiendish booby traps. There was another thing that was super... I, I, I'd like... Um, it was a train that ran through the little village where I grew up. And I remember. Bing, 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 bong, 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 bong. Get those lights off. Bing, 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 bing. There was a picture by the train tracks of a dude who got electrocuted on the train tracks. And it was like super f***ed up. It was all purple and burned. It was like his leg or something because he'd stepped on the third rail. And it's like, f***, man. I don't need to see the shit. I'm a kid. I know I don't step on the third rail. I just don't do it. Don't do that. Why do I have to see a picture of a super electrocuted guy? Jesus, government. Why the fuck? What the fuck, British government? <laughs> exactly. And they didn't muck about in getting their point across. The COI also produced films for adults, which delivered equally grave warnings on using a chip ban, polishing floors, smoking in bed, shoving about 27 plugs into the same socket, and top tips on how to survive a nuclear attack. But it was the films produced for children that would strike fear into the hearts of the audience and leave a lasting mental impact. Because 
Because if you get the message across when you're a kid, then you don't need to advertise them when you're an adult. Number of warnings that I've had about smoke alarms as an adult, basically zero. Number of ones I had as a kid, one. And it was enough. The thing about these public information films, or PIFs, is that they were exempt from any censorship or age classification because they'd been sanctioned by the all-knowing government. So the directors largely had free reign to compose the darkest symphonies of horror that could be broadcast at any time of day. Another important factor is that the films were short and free for broadcasters to air, so they were regularly shown without warning as quick filler to plug a gap in the schedules. In that sense, the PIF often felt like a surprise ninja attack. They could even randomly be sandwiched between cartoons. Just as a young child had finished Dr. Snuggles and had settled down into watching Paddington Bear, they got clobbered with a short live action film in which a kid either gets mauled by a speeding train or slowly suffocates in a grain pit or gets frazzled to death by an electricity pylon. Holy sh! We don't give a fuck! Girl, how your kids doing? Girl, fuck them kids, yeah. And I thought my smoke alarm one was bad. The British government was pretty much dishing up nosebleeds before tea time. One of the best remembered examples that scarred children. Excuse me, what are you doing? One of the best remembered examples that scarred children for life was a film called Lonely Water from 1973. This was commissioned in response to a recent increase in the number of child drowning incidents. The sea. Oh god, we're gonna watch a video about child drowning. Why, government? Just put a fence around the f***ing ponds! If there's so much risk of child children getting electrocuted by pylons, put up some barbed wire! <laughs> Good lord! Although it's undeniably effective. Again, the smoke alarms. It affected me. But it also, it's the reason I'm traumatized. The COI cooked up a disturbing scene of lurking menace in which a group of careless kids are playing by a misty riverbank watched over by a hooded figure who looks remarkably like death. <laughs> uh, I was wanted, just wanted to watch Paddington! The dude is actually the spirit of the dark and lonely water, and he introduces himself via a, via a chilling narration provided by Donald Pleasance, best known for playing such villainous movie roles as Blofeld in You Only Live Twice. The spirit coldly explains that he preys on the unwary, the show-offs, and the foolish, and the good news for him is that there's a young fool born every minute. Take this bunch of idiot children, for example. One of them tries to retrieve a football from the river with a big stick, but ends up sinking beneath the depths. Another boy is seen inching his way over a tree branch over a dark pond as the spirit informs us that the rotten branch will never hold his weight. How about government just give children swimming lessons if they're drowning in ponds? I mean, Jesus Christ. Maybe just tell them to stand up. It's not that deep. He's absolutely right. The little boy plunges into a watery grave. Well, we never said these ads were unpredictable. Unlike that smoke alarm one, which was desperately unpredictable. <laughs> Government, why? Stop it. Get some help. The spirit's cackling fun is severely diluted by the end when another group of sensible children come along over which he has no power. But his final echoing threat to viewers is... I'll be back. <laughs> so, now we know where Arnie got his catchphrase from. I'm not sure there's an alternative cut where the spirit signs off with Hasta la vista, baby. Some parents complain that whilst lonely water helped to deter children from playing by dangerous ponds, it also sparked a general phobia of water and deterred them from learning how to swim. Can you imagine they take that to court and they're like, I'm suing the government because I want my child to be able to swim and now he's afraid of water. And the judge is like, Overruled! Your child didn't drown! Did he? The government literally saved your child and all children's lives. All hail the government! But whilst this film is often labelled as one of the most unsettling and memorable PEIFs, PIFs ever produced, it's actually quite mild in comparison to some of the others. Take Apaches, for example. This film from 1977 starts off as quite a jolly note as a young Danny's parents appear to be preparing for his birthday party, but then we cut to scenes that took place the previous week when Danny and his buddies were mucking about on the local farm every day, noticeably losing a member of the gang on each fun packed visit. Wait, have all of Danny's have all of Danny's friends been killed on a farm? And now he's just happily celebrated the next week. <laughs> Danny, callous mate. Danny, why aren't you sad? I made new friends, didn't I? I wasn't that close to them. And then they got mauled by a combine harvester. <laughs> 
It's a bit like a cross between the Famous Five and the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Holy <laughs> Oh my god. As the kids dress up as Apache warriors for a game of cowboys and Indians, one of them gets squashed under the wheels of a tractor. <laughs> the other gets cancelled for cultural appropriation. Ah, no he doesn't, he gets thrown in a combine harvester! Over the next few days, one of them is crushed to death by a falling metal fence, another drowns in a massive vat of pig shit, while another steals a tractor and then goes hurtling down a ditch. At this point, you'd be like, Farmer, can you start locking some doors or maybe not leaving the keys to the tractors in the f tractors? Jesus Christ. The most disturbing one by far is the least visually graphic. The surviving members of the gang come across an unlabeled bottle of mystery liquid in a barn, and young Sharon decides to have a swig. Sharon, no! <laughs> She recoils at the awful taste, but she seems okay. However, the mystery liquid turned out to be rat poison, and we cut to a scene later outside her bedroom as Sharon sque screams for her mum in petrified agony for the several shockingly intense seconds. It is truly horrible. As each member of the gang throws a seven, we see a name tag taken off a school peg and clothing removed from a bedroom drawer. Oh, that is so chilling. Oh my god. Oh my god, I went to look round to preschool the other day. Fucking... I'm so I'm such a dad and we're looking at this school and it so reminds me of just being at school and I'm like oh my god I'm, I, I mean I'm the kids have fun at school I had fun at school genuinely quite liked school but compared to my life now school was f***ing lame <laughs> I mean you had to go in you had to study a bunch of that you didn't really want to study it's like I look forward to classes like theatre and you know fun classes but then you had to go to like chemistry and it'd be like oh why and now i just get to do what i want all day which is much nicer i mean like for 90 percent of the day where at school i feel like 90 percent of the time you don't get to do what you want and i was just thinking oh my god daughter oh my god son you have so many years of this ahead of you and it's gonna feel like such a large part of your life and it is and it is and i'm just glad that it's not me going to do that get off that game and do some homework what are we talking about oh yeah but there were the names on the pegs and stuff and you're like that's depressing because they're taking the names off because the kids got mauled by a combine harvester or some turned into bread the final twist is that those parents weren't preparing for a birthday party after all they were preparing for danny's funeral F you government oh my god taking ah it's like that episode of scrubs <laughs> That, that horrible episode where at the end they're like, where do you think you are? And it's like, oh, he's not a birthday party. He's at his best friend's funeral. And you're like, I'm not crying. I'm definitely not crying, Brendan Frazier. <laughs> oh my God. It's f chilling. The final twist is that... Oh, I read that already. You can't help wondering why the gang kept going back to the farm of doom every day. You can only assume they all had very short memories. Should we go back and play at that farm? Wait, didn't one of our friends get eaten by a combat? No, I don't, I don't remember that. Wasn't there someone called Peter? No, no, it's called Peter. Let's go f around with tractors. Hello, you people know a lot about trucks. I'm not sure how many kids would have chosen to spend their summer holidays rolling around in pig shit every day anyway, although this was the 1970s and Game Boys hadn't yet been invented. Another peculiar hazard specific to the era was that well-known perilous risk of children accidentally locking themselves in abandoned fridges. <laughs> really? Oh, I have heard of people getting stuck in fridges though, but... Oh, I guess they used to have a lock on them? Why didn't we just use magnets back in the day? It's not that much of a revelation to have that magnetic strip round the edge, is it? They really made a whole film devoted to this. Old Fridges Can Kill from 1971 was an animated piece which warned adults not to leave their old fridges just lying about all over the place. The problem with the old airtight fridge is that they were impossible to open from the inside, so if a young kid came across an abandoned fridge and had a sudden compulsion to pretend that it was his new spaceship, he could potentially get locked inside and suffocate. Grown-ups were urged to either dispose of their old fridges responsibly, get them counsel to come and pick them up, or throw the chilling death traps in the fires of Mount Doom. Or, I don't know, if you've got an old <laughs> knocking around that you're not going to use, just knock the door off. Just be like, bang, and the door's off. And then it can sit in your garage safely until you die and your children have to dispose of the fridge. Although I couldn't get my hands on exact figures, I estimate that this film and the subsequent introduction of safer magnetic locks saved around 155,000 children a year from getting stuck inside old fridges. No, 
one. <laughs> Danny, that's an absurd number. The most shocking children's film of all wasn't technically produced by the MOI. The finishing line from 1977 was commissioned by British Transport Films as a stark warning on the dangers of playing near railway tracks. But this educational film was deemed to have crossed the line so far that it was effectively banned for two years. With a running time of just over 20 minutes. Oh my god. Uh, the transport agency made a 20 minute movie scaring the shit out of kids. Why? It's too much. Excuse me. It's too much. It's a spoof version of a school sports tournament in which the sadistic teachers have decided to hold Olympic style events right next to a busy railway track. Dozens of young kids are encouraged to participate in potentially lethal events such as playing chicken on the tracks, throwing stones and bricks at passing trains. And the, what the f <laughs> and the ultimate final challenge of marching through a mile-long railway tunnel while a train is headed in their direction at high speed. The body count on this one is staggeringly high, and the depiction of bloody child corpses lying mangled on the railway tracks is breathtakingly graphic. The black humor kind of makes it even more sinister. The color-coded teams are deducted points by the cold-hearted teachers whenever one of their number fails to survive an accident. In the aftermath of the stone lobbing event, the train grinds to a halt as a couple of conductors march up and down the aisles of the carriages, awarding team points for the amount of damage caused. A direct hit on the now-blinded driver is worth six points, while further points are issued for hits on a young female passenger whose face is now drenched in f blood. And after the final tunnel marching event, only four of the dozens of participating children stagger limply out the other end alive as they are checked off and congratulated by the school register. The other twisted corpses are carried out on a stretcher and laid along a line the length of the railway tracks. This aired in the day. <laughs> this sounds like some f***ing like Schindler's List mother f***ing movie. What? And next, Paddington Bear. In the gruesome... It's a gruesome climax to 20 of the weirdest minutes you're ever likely to see. Straight after this video has gone live, I'll post the full film on Twitter if anybody has the stomach for it. Although the events are revealed to be the fantasy of a young kid who is contemplating playing on the railway tracks but subsequently has a change of heart, the film was deemed to be a startling step too far which traumatized young viewers and caused a nosebleed epidemic. Really? Kids get afraid and they have a nosebleed? Is that a thing? <laughs> The finishing line was withdrawn from circulation after two long years and was replaced with something a little tamer, in which only one kid's legs get mashed up by a speeding train. The closing credits were finally in sight during the late 80s, when the public information horror movies were very much toned down and the nosebleeds thankfully dried up. Looking back today at the old scratchy footage of old tea time nasties, one of the most striking things about the PIFs is their sheer quietness. Whereas a modern young audience would expect their senses to be bombarded by color and sounds and action during an educational video, the old PIFs had an eerie stillness with surprisingly long stretches of tense silence and a feeling of impending doom. They were essentially shot in the same style as an adult horror movie, and will almost certainly never see their like again. Thank f God. <laughs> but could the government or the filmmakers of the 70s and 80s be accused of acting irresponsibly by striking random terror into the hearts and minds of innocent children who were just trying to enjoy an episode of Rupert the Bear? The jury is out on this one. One of the directors, Peter Watkins Hughes, perhaps makes a valid point when he says, Some people may think I went too far, but I really don't. You're manipulating an audience to save a life rather than sell a cinema ticket. Maybe we should be deeply worried for the safety of British kids who grew up after the 1980s and missed out on all of this crucial, heart hitting advice. No, we shouldn't. I know you can play on the railway. There was a sign, there was a picture of the electrocuted dude. And I, I don't know. It seems obvious. And I didn't. I didn't. I, I'm imagining the number of deaths of children on railways is low, but I imagine they'll be fine. Anybody born in the 90s will surely have learned how to ride a mountain bike without breaking his collarbone or something. Oh, Danny, steady on. Simon, please stay away from ditches and trains and pig shit and abandon 1970s fridges. Noted, Danny. Oh my God, this just reminds me of all the horror of like f***ing children. Ah, man, it's not nice. Anyway, this has been an episode of Brain Blaze. Thank you so much for watching. Smash that like button, buy yourself some rotten badger, link below. Thank you for watching. Jesus, government. Why the fuck? What the fuck, British government? <laughs> exactly.